Hello, welcome everyone. Um, this is our very last lecture. Um, congratulations for having made it so far um, into the class. Um, so um, the very last lecture, we are going to talk about social movements as ways to address poverty and justice. Um, I think, um, especially to nowadays, um, everyone is really familiar with social movements. Um, we have the ongoing Black Lives Matters, um, which is really inspiring. Um, so um, the picture that I'm showing you here right now um, is um, the picture of anti dam movements in India. Um, so there are some mega dam projects, and this one particularly called um, the Namada Dam um, has been displacing um, a lot of people because they are submerging a big area um, so dispossessing or displacing people from their homeland so these people do not want to be displaced and they were protesting against it okay um, so um, in one of my readings um, I asked you to um, read um, an article called is there a global environmental justice movement and also um, i asked you to explore this website called the ej atlas right um so environmental justice atlas um, ejatlas.org so i think i believe this is one of the most comprehensive compilation of um, environmental justice movements around the world all cases that were being reported um, were represented here by um, dots. So the different colors represent the different commodities involved um, in this environmental justice movement. So you can see lots of them all around Asia um, and uh, also around Africa um, and also in Europe you can see here. So um, feel free to go there and explore. I believe you can look at um, the different commodities um, or the different countries and it will provide the details of what is the environmental justice movement about what is the movement strategy um, etc right so um, this environmental justice atlas um, is closely related to the reading is there a global environmental justice movement um, that I asked you to read about and so when you look and explore these websites, um, you can see the environmental conflicts are created along local and global commodity change from cradle to grave. For example, um, a bottle of water. So in the beginning, um, you do need to extract water somewhere, um, clean water, um, spring water, underground water. You need to extract it. And then after that, you need to manufacture it into a plastic bottle. So plastic bottles are usually manufactured using fossil fuel. So that is a separate process. But if we just focus on the water itself, um, the water has to be extracted. And then the water has to go into factories and be um, put into water bottles. And then um, the water has to be transported using roads or even cargo ships um, to around the world. And then in the very end, we need to dispose the plastic waste of the bottled water. So um, from the extraction phase, um, there are places where you have conflict because um, big corporations have extracted so much water that they are um, taking away the water use um, from the local populations. And then um, in the uh, manufacturing phase, um, sometimes it produces pollutions. And then in the transportation phase, um, sometimes road buildings and even port cities building um, infrastructure development for this transportation could be displacing some populations, some of them with compensations, but not always. And also in the end, um, the plastic waste um, um, has to end up somewhere especially plastics uh, if they are not recyclable they can actually last it forever um, on planet earth and we have already talked about um, um, two weeks ago that um, most of the plastic waste are actually exported um, out of the western country um, to be taken up by china malaysia even though nowadays this country are rejecting it
The majority of reported conflicts are located in the extraction phase of resources such as mining, fossil fuel, and other types of land conflicts. And most conflicts in EJ Atlas were from rural areas, right? So um, we also previously talked about rural and urban environmental injustice, talking about how most of the projects will actually be located in the rural areas because it has a smaller populations. And rural areas usually have a much weaker political um, voices compared to the urban areas. And then other projects include infrastructure and waste disposal projects, which I have already um, discussed with you. And um, even though uh, most of these or even all of these environmental conflicts are local, um, there are similarities in terms of um, classes of conflicts. Um, for example, they involve some commodity chains um, and similarities in terms of actors. Some of the companies are the same in uh, multiple places or um, they are the companies of um, similar nature, like such as um, oil um, extracting companies and there are many overlapping in terms of forms of mobilizations and also all these conflicts together have given birth to international environmental justice organizations or networks right so um, many of these networks um, propagate or uh, or became allies of um, many local movements around the world I have extracted some of the um, information um, from the article. So this one is about um, frequency of actors mobilizing for environmental justice. So who are the people who are organizing and mobilizing for the social movements? So you can see that uh, number one is really the local environmental justice organization. So uh, most of them are led by the local people, right? And then um, they are also just normal citizens, neighbors. And then um, number three is actually farmers. So a lot of farmers are being affected um, probably because they own most of the land in the rural areas. Um, so they also have the tendency to be displaced by projects like this. And then we um, have social movement, meaning nobody, no, no particular group, but people organize themselves into a social movement. And then indigenous group, um, well, indigenous group, even though it's number five, but considering um, the small populations of indigenous people worldwide, I believe this is quite a high proportion of um, people involved in social movements. Um, and you can continue to read, and some of them might be a little bit out of expectations, such as um, trade unions, religious group, recreational users, or artisanal miners, uh, water pickers, recyclers, etc. Right? And then this um, chart really shows about this, sorry, this bar graph really shows um, the frequency of forms of mobilizations for environmental justice. So how do people mobilize? Um, and then uh, the biggest one is really um, official complaints or petitions. There are many websites that serve as platform for such kind of petition petitions, such as uh, Change Thought or LG. So we also have street protests, which is what we are having now for Black Lives Matters, and then um, development of a network or collective actions and involvement of international NGOs, media-based activism, alternative media, so maybe through social media, and lawsuit, judicial judicial activisms, and um, create creation of alternative reports, blockades. Um, so a lot of indigenous group. Um, when they do not acquire sufficient support, they just go ahead and block um, the loggers, the miners from assessing um, their homeland. Okay. Um, so I was talking about how um, even though these movements are local, they have managed to um, collectively um, give birth to our international network. So this one is from a website called EJNet. So it seems to be an international environmental justice network. And then um, they have adopted these principles of environmental justice. There are 17 of them. I'm just capturing a screenshot here to show you uh, very roughly what are they about. So you can see that um, this is being um, adopted. This was being adopted in 1991. 
and then it actually focuses on the people of color do hereby re-establish our spiritual interdependence to the sacredness of our mother earth to respect and celebrate each of our culture languages and beliefs about the natural world and our roles in healing ourselves to ensure environmental justice to promote economic alternative which would contribute to develop to the development of environmentally safe livelihoods and to secure our political economic and cultural liberation that has been denied for over 500 years of colonization and oppression resulting in the poisoning of our communities and land and genocide of our people do affirm and adopt these principles of environmental justice so you can see that there are a lot of issues being talked about here so obviously this is quite different um, from um, other kinds of environmentalism which was called the first world environmentalism um, typically um, in the 1970s um, some groups of people um, especially um, the richer people in um, the Western countries realize that about the pollution impacts of economic growth and therefore they fight against it of course during that time there were also people of color fighting for environmental justice um, but um, sometimes some of this environmentalism didn't try to address at all the historical colonizations and sovereignty and um, self-determination of people of color. Um, but this environmental justice network really put that in the forefront. Also, there is this called the Bali Principles of Climate Justice, um, which is kind of adopted in 2002. Um, and I have a screenshot over here. The International Climate Justice Network includes this, 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 this um, organizations. Um, and then um, climate change is a scientific reality whose effects are already being felt around the world. And um, if consumption of fossil fuel, deforestation and ecological devastation continues, it is certain that climate change will result in increased temperature, sea level rise, changes in agricultural patterns increased frequency and magnitude of natural disaster etc and then documents went on um, to talk about the different principles which i have highlighted some of them here i've highlighted article 6 18 and 26. um so uh i really wanted to show you by highlighting these three things uh, maybe to show you how they are actually not talking about even development or develop different places equally or asking you to develop undeveloped areas so they are not really talking about reducing inequalities they are quite fundamentally about opposing a specific kind of development and wanting to be left alone from that kind of development usually associated with um, neoliberalization so um, climate justice opposes the role of transnational corporations in shaping unsustainable production and consumption patterns and lifestyle as well as their role in unduly influencing national and international decision making right so they don't want the power of transnational corporations who are degrading the environment so it's very political here and then climate justice affirms the rights of communities dependent on natural resources for their livelihood and cultures to own and manage the same in sustainable manner and is opposed to the commodification of nature and its resources. So this one is really, really directly opposed to the neoliberal idea of um, trading, green capitalism, and even sustainable development of understanding um, environment as um, natural capital that must be taken into account. Um, for this group, it is integrated if, with people's self-determination and livelihoods. And then number 26, climate justice requires that we as individuals and communities make personal and consumer choices to consume as little of Mother Earth resources, right? Conserve our needs for energy and make the conscious decision to challenge and reprioritize our lifestyle, rethinking our ethics with relation to environment and the Mother Earth. So you can see that this is really a different narrative from the Brandland Report on Sustainable Development, which talks about we must alleviate poverty using technology um, so that um, we can um, better protect the environment. So this is a totally different narrative. It is talking about we must consume as little as possible as consumer and rethinking our ethics and relations, right? So my question here is, um, do you think social movement is an effective strategy for making changes? 
What are the preconditions required for social movement to succeed? 